As 2018 is wrapping up, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at 20 huge PlayStation 4 games coming early 2019. So what do I mean by early 2019? Well, we're putting the cap off at the end of March. So anywhere from January 1st to March 31st, those are the games we're going to be covering. And yeah, there are a ton of games coming in that window. You can even make an argument that that window from early January to late March is busier than the fall season. And that's saying a lot. We've got games from a wide variety of different genres as well. So without further ado let's get right into it and we'll try to go game to game pretty quickly first up we have the resident evil 2 remake resident evil 2 is coming back now fully remade for the playstation 4 and you can tell right away that this isn't a typical hd remastering i mean the game was originally released on the playstation 1 so of course they kind of needed to go back to the drawing board and that's what we got with the resident evil 2 remake it looks amazing and resident evil 2 for what it was back on the ps1 that was an incredible game and really embodied that element of horror that a lot of the later re titles had lost while this game looks fantastic and i fully imagine it to do very well. I would also love to see a remake of Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, but for now, we can enjoy the Resident Evil 2 remake on January 25th. Next up, we have a JRPG that I'm very much looking forward to, and that is Tales of Vesperia the Definitive Edition. Tales of Vesperia was released all the way back in 2008. Yes, it's been over 10 years since the game was originally released on the Xbox 360. Yes, we never got the PlayStation 3 version over here in the States, and the PlayStation 3 version was without a doubt the best version of the game, including new characters, more voice acting, and a lot of additional content, but now we're finally getting that version of the game with the Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. The Tales of series has been a long-running JRPG franchise, but Vesperia in my eyes is one of the top games in the entire series, maybe the best. There's a lot of content to it, and it's going to be a game to keep you busy for a very long time as it hits the PS4 on January 11th. Next up, we have Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown. Ace Combat is coming back with a brand new game in Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown. It's been a long time since we saw a brand new Ace Combat title, and if you're on a where they're combat flight action games that are very, very well done. And on the PlayStation 4, Skies Unknown will have some VR-focused missions. Those will be separate from the traditional campaign, but if you do have PSVR, that's something extra to note. Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown hits the PS4 on January 18th. Another major remaster that'll be hitting early next year is Onimusha Warlords. Onimusha was a beloved franchise that originated on the PlayStation 2. We haven't heard from this series in a very long time, but it's developed a cult following of people that wanted a new Onimusha game, and while this isn't a brand new game. Onimusha Warlords will be a remastering of the very first Onimusha title that was very, very well received. Capcom's bringing it out to the PlayStation 4 at a $19.99 retail price point, and it's coming on January 15th. Next up, we have a long-awaited JRPG, and that is Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes, Kingdom Hearts 3 will finally be released early next year. This is a game that we've wanted for so long, going back to the release of Kingdom Hearts 2 all the way back in 2005. KH3 was originally announced back at E3 of 2013, and we've waited so long, but the game is finally done. So far from what we've seen, and we've seen a ton of Kingdom Hearts 3, visually it looks incredible. From a gameplay standpoint, it looks great. The Kingdom Hearts story is a little bit jumbled, so I'm interested to see how that turns out, but it'll just finally be exciting to get Kingdom Hearts 3 on our hands. It's hitting the PS4 on January 29th. Next up, we have The Occupation. The Occupation is a very interesting single-player title that takes place in a single government building. In real time over four hours, the game advances without input from the player, but almost all in-game actions can affect the game's overarching story. It's pretty unique in how it's presenting the game. The Occupation hits the PS4 on February 5th. Next up, we have a game hardly anyone is talking about, but once you look at it, it's hard not to be captivated by it, and it's Degrees of Separation. Degrees of Separation has you follow the journey of Ember and Rhyme, two souls empowered with the ability to manipulate the environment around them while growing ever closer to one another. Visually, the game looks great, and it's touting a compelling, emotion-driven story by acclaimed fantasy writer Chris Avalone, and it allows you to engage in single-player and cooperative 2D platforming gameplay. Degrees of Separation hits the PlayStation 4 on February 14th. Next up, we have another game in a notable franchise, and it is God Eater 3. God Eater has often been compared to the Monster Hunter franchise, but of course, presentation-wise, it does have more of a Japanese and anime look going on for it that will please some people. But in the same token, the comparisons with Monster Hunter have to end because the game does have its own mechanics and unique style. If you have yet to play the God Eater games, God Eater 1 and 2 are both available on the PlayStation 4, but God Eater 3 will be hitting the PS4 on February 8th. Next up, we have another game in a long-running franchise, and it is Trials 
Rising. Trials Rising is the first Trials game in quite a while, and if you're unaware of what the game is, you control a rider on a physics-based motorcycle from the start of the level to the end while navigating a number of obstacles. It's very challenging, but at the same time, it's a super, super engaging and addicting game. There's a reason why Trials for Ubisoft has really sustained as a franchise and the latest title in the series, Trials Rising, comes to the PS4 on February 12th. Next up, we have a game that on the surface, I think a lot of people are interested in, and that is Jump Force. Now, I have to be honest, going into the release of Jump Force, I'm still a little bit skeptical with it. From a gameplay standpoint, I just don't know what to make of it. However, aesthetically, and just what this game represents, being a combination of all of these different anime and bringing all of the characters together, yes, it's very exciting from that end. And featuring characters from Naruto, Bleach, One Piece, and so many other iconic anime, that is going to engage some people right off the get-go. I hope that the game just generally becomes a quality fighting game. We'll find out as Jump Force hits the PS4 on February 15th. Speaking of fighting games, on February 15th, another major fighting game is dropping, and that is Dead or Alive 6. Dead or Alive 6 is, of course, the latest title in the Dead or Alive franchise, a very technical fighter that features very fast-paced battles. Dead or Alive 6 will be introducing some new mechanics, such as Fatal Rush, a beginner-friendly mechanic where pressing one button multiple times results in the character performing a simple combo. We've also got Break Gauge, a meter that builds up as the character attacks, and if the gauge is full, a Fatal Rush will culminate in a move similar to what the Critical Blow in Dead or Alive 5 would do. Other mechanics and nuances will also be introduced as Dead or Alive 6 comes to the PS4 on February 15th. Next up, we have a game that's highly anticipated, but at the same time, I think it's safe to say that the majority of gamers are skeptical going into it, and that is Anthem. Anthem is the latest game from Bioware, and of course, with its multiplayer focus, it's a little bit of a stray from what Bioware typically does with their single-player experience. However, Anthem does look like a very ambitious experience. It combines a third-person shooter and action RPG elements in an open world shared with up to three players at once. You play as a freelancer, and of course, one of the marquee elements of Anthem is the fully customizable exosuit known as the Javelin. These suits can be customized to have various unique weapons and superhuman ability. Anthem is a game you have to be a little skeptical going in. It's a super ambitious project, and Bioware has been a hit or miss studio recently. We'll see how Anthem turns out as it hits the PS4 on February 22nd. Next up, we have Metro Exodus. This is a game that I'm super, super pumped for because I played Metro 2033 and Metro Last Night. And by the way, if you haven't, you can get the Metro Redo Collection on PlayStation 4 very, very cheap. And those are some great single-player first-person shooters. However, Metro Exodus looks to raise the bar on the franchise, having a more open world design. Visually, it looks absolutely incredible. And from a storytelling standpoint, it looks as good as ever. Creating a very absorbing atmosphere is also something Metro really gets right in. It looks like Metro Exodus is gonna have that spades as well. It comes to the PS4 on February 22nd. Next up, we have a brand new IP coming from Square Enix, and it is Left Alive. Well, Left Alive is being set in the front Mission Evolved universe. However, it is a brand new experience altogether. It's a new survival action shooter telling a human story of survival from the perspective of three different protagonists during the devastating invasion set in a war-torn Novo Salva. There's been a lot of comparisons thrown around to Metal Gear Solid. However, that's not definitely a bad thing, and with Metal Gear going to the wayside for now, maybe Left Alive can fill that void that we're having. Left Alive comes to the PlayStation 4 on March 5th. Next up, we have the return of a major franchise in Devil May Cry with Devil May Cry 5. After the release of DMC Devil May Cry, it seemed like a lot of people were pushed away from the Devil May Cry franchise. Even though that game was rather good, it just had a different presentation and stylization with a new Dante. Devil May Cry 5 represents a return to form for Devil May Cry, but also featuring the return of Nero and Dante with their original styles with a couple of new twists. Gameplay-wise, it looks awesome. Music is great, albeit that one Dante theme kind of pushed us away for a little bit, but good thing that was remedied. And for longtime fans of Devil May Cry, Devil May Cry 5 will definitely be a title to check out. It comes to the PS4 on March 8th. Next up, we have Tom Clancy's The Division 2. Now, going into the release of The Division, anticipation for that game was so, so high. And initially, it did seem like some people were disappointed by The Division. However, Ubisoft continued to update the game and make it better and better. And there was a lasting community in the first Division. Now, we have the second game, and it looks to build upon the successes of the first title while fleshing out a lot of the elements in the first title. If you were completely turned off by the first title, I don't see the second title really winning you over. However, if you've been invested into The Division, The Division 2 is definitely going to be a title to check out, offering you a similar sense of an online action shooter RPG experience. The Division 2 comes to the PS4 on March 15th. Next up, we have the latest game in a very notable IP, and that is One Piece World Seeker. Of course, One Piece is without a doubt one of the most popular anime in the world. However, from a video game sense, not a lot of the games have been really anything to write home about. Well, One Piece World Seeker looks to change that, as it's the first One Piece title that is set in an open world, and from a visual standpoint and gameplay standpoint, it looks rather good. Do I expect something 
something absolutely top tier and being a game that, you know, has a 90 plus on Metacritic? No, but I just want a quality One Piece game as this is one IP that definitely, definitely deserves it. And hopefully we finally get that with One Piece World Seeker as it comes to the PS4 on March 15th. Next up, we have The Sinking City. The Sinking City is an adventure and investigation game set in an open world inspired by the universe of H.P. Lovecraft, the master of horror. It's set in a half-submerged city that is gripped by supernatural forces. You're a private investigator and you have to uncover the truth of what has possessed the city. Definitely a game with a lot of mystery attached to it, and we've been seeing more and more games like this. The Sinking City will be hitting the PS4 on March 21st. Next up, we have one of the most anticipated games of 2019 it's the latest game from from software in sekiro shadows die twice of course i just mentioned the game is being done by from software and if you're somehow living under a rock those are the guys that of course put out the souls games as well as bloodborne but sekiro is their brand new ip and it's being published by activision and on the surface while looking at the game maybe you'll see a lot of resemblances to souls but they are touting that it's its own unique ip this is a completely different experience but while it will be a challenging action adventure experience it's also bringing a lot of new the game is set in the late 1500s, Sengoku, Japan, a brutal period of constant life and death conflict. You come face to face with larger than life foes in a dark and twisted world, unleash an arsenal of deadly prosthetic tools and powerful ninja abilities while you blend stealth, vertical traversal, and visceral head-to-head -head combat in a bloody confrontation. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is shaping up to be one of the early contenders for Game of the Year in 2019. We'll find out how it turns out as it hits the PS4 on March 22nd. And lastly, I wanted to give a mention to Assassin's Creed 3. Remastered. Now, Assassin's Creed 3 is one of those AC titles that it seems like a lot of gamers don't talk about. Usually, gamers will bring up AC2, maybe AC4, but Assassin's Creed 3 has kind of been forgotten about, but it is a rather good game when you look at it from a historical standpoint. If you strip away the real-life elements of the game and that god-awful ending, there's quite a great game here in Assassin's Creed 3 that does start off a little bit slow, but once it picks up, man, does it get good. Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered was bundled in with the special edition of Assassin's Creed Odyssey, so if you pick that up, you'll be getting it with AC3 Remastered. Remastered and it comes with the season pass of AC Odyssey, but it'll just be nice having a chance to revisit Assassin's Creed 3 as I think people going back and playing the game next year will also result in gamers just thinking more fondly of it. We'll find out as Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered is set to release sometime in March 2019. No exact date has been revealed at this point. So wow, that is going to conclude this video. Again, that's only going over early 2019. Yes, from early January to late March, those are all of the games that we have. And of course, there are going to be more games announced and more games set for that window and as they are announced we will be sure to let you guys know but early 2019 looks to be an absolutely packed period of playstation 4 game releases with so much variety and so much high quality titles being released let us know which of these games you're excited for the most which games you're planning on picking up and sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below thank you for watching and goodbye